Hello everyone, welcome to the corner. We're going to kind of do a little chopping here today. I'm going to start moving this rear window forward on this 51 on the Chevy here. Um, as you notice, I got the uh, squirrels working today. <laughs> Keep them out of trouble. I got them holding the back bumper up while the glue dries. <laughs> now, in the last video, I had mentioned that this back window, when you look at this angle here, that angle falls inside the back window or inside that back lip. I like to have it to where this meets that angle of that roof line. To where the back window, when the back window lays in there, the back window matches the angle that I've got here, not here. So um, we've got to bring this forward. So what best way to do it is to <laughs> come down right here, cut around it, cut across right where the trunk lid meets the tulip panel. That's not marking too well. Got some mold releasing the crack down in the gap there. And then on the other side, we're going to follow the same idea. So that's going to be where we're going to cut it. And then all I'm going to do is when this cuts free, there's, there'll be a little bit this gap this much right here is probably going to just be cut completely out of there to where once this is all cut free this will just all, all we're going to do is take this piece and slide it forward to where it makes a little bit better line or a flow come across that back window um and then we'll just fill in the, the back edge we'll put a new piece of plastic in across the back of the tulip panel there create a more of a defined tulip panel instead of just the back edge of the window. And about all I'm going to use for this is just the razor saw and a hobby knife. And to get started, I'm going to take the razor saw, cut down through here, same on the other side. All I'm going to do is lay it inside the back window. Just cut down to where your line is. Do that on both sides. Try not to bounce the camera around too much here. So now we're down to where we need to be there. Now's when the exacto knife comes into play. And always keep your hands out of the way, as everyone knows. But we're just going to cut, cut back along this line. To where it, just enough to create a groove to where we're going to be cutting it apart at. Use the back edge of your blade just to cut a little bit quicker and deeper. Keep it in the groove, I guess. I guess I should have checked to see how thick the resin was right in that area. Like I say, you just keep working the blade back and forth until it pops through the back side. 
getting close there. Right. A lot of times where he pops through at, like right there, you can just take and put the blade in it. And just kind of run forward on it. A lot of times the pressure of that blade will pop it free. Just crack the deck lid on it. We can fix that later. Then do the same thing on the other side. Hope you all don't mind being a little lazy today. I didn't put a backdrop up. <laughs> Figured we can do with what we got. Nice colorful background, either black or blue. Usually I put the blue one up when I'm working on something just to keep the black one nice for when I show the feature cards and such. Also, I have a black and white checkerboard one to match my workbench. <laughs> I have to break that out one of these days. Mesmerize y'all with a black and white checkerboard. Make it feel like that squirrel back there holding that bumper up. <laughs> oh, come on, man. And yeah, not ready to pop. There it is. This is not one to pop too well yet. Just got to force it a little bit sometimes, I guess. All right, I'm going to come across... Pan the line here. Right now I'm just using the back edge of the blade. I'm not cutting with the blade, I'm just scribing the back edge of the blade, blade across. Get it to the point where you can thin it out. Back edge of the blade takes pretty, oops, pretty good amount of material off at a time. You want to be careful when you're doing, coming across here, you don't want to come in here to cut too soon. So if you cut too soon with this being as thin as it is, you'll snap it in half. You want to try to take as much material off as you can before you try to snap it. What I just did over on the other side is I was coming across enough to where it was starting to pop through. The blade was actually going through the panel line. By doing that, it thinned it out enough to where it created enough relief to where I can cut it and it'd snap it off. But right now, if I tried coming up across on the inside of this and cutting across, I'd probably end up snapping this. All it is is just taking your time, working slow, and until you pop through like that. Now there's probably enough release there, or relief there to do that and pop it free. And that's with the piece out. Like I say, all we're going to do is we're going to cut that move it forward to where it's going to be probably right around right around there and by doing that that'll give us a little bit better flow to that back window i'm going to clean some of this up a little bit i'll do it off camera i'm just going to clean some of this stuff up straighten it up square it up a little bit be right back okay once you get to this point i try to no well, not always not always but Try to get it eyeballed to where this is going to look right. And then we can kind of mark it and then take off what we're going to take off. Now, I've, got, I've had some new subscribers pop in. For those of you that don't know, this is going to be a giveaway body when we reach a 1,000 subscribers. And I've got a uh, chop top. 62 Buick that I did for the chop top tutorial. I'm going to put both these up 
as a giveaway for the thousand subscriber mark. Got to realizing I'm up to 825 subscribers now. Woo -hoo. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> and I got to thinking, I better get going on these things, get them done in time to do the giveaway. So <laughs> that's why I've decided to pull this back out and move this back window on it. Okay. Now on this where we kind of marked it before, where the blue line is, you want to try to kind of match. This is kind of cut at a little bit of an angle. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me grab that. You can see how the resin's kind of cut at a little bit of an angle. That's about the angle of it there. You want to try to keep that because this is going to go back together into that. And you want the angles to kind of match when they go back together. So you want to try to keep in, keep in check with that mark there. Not really. Not focusing in too well today, I guess. Well, like me. I'm just going to nip it off. That's the piece that came off there. Even if they don't 100% match. Fill it on super glue or body filler layer, I guess. <laughs> now, flipping this around, you want to try to mark the other side so you can get them matched even. As far as their length. You don't want one longer than the other. Because that'll make for a funky looking back window. Look like you're back in the 70s in the disco area looking through a twisted, contorted stained glass window. Woo! Oh, sorry. Flashbacks. <laughs> yes, I grew up in the 70s. Wasn't that old in the 70s, but I grew up in the 70s. <laughs> but... Yeah, you know, more of a 80s kid, but I guess more by any means. All right. Try not to date myself here, you know. <laughs> I guess if I told you I was 52, you guys can figure out how old I am. Or where I, oh yeah, what year I was born. Duh, I just told you how old I am. <laughs> Sorry, not awake yet. All right, oh, that's not going to be able to hold it in there. Yeah, I can't hold on to them either. That's why I call for the nurse and say tweezers. Okay, this is going to be the new... Try to hold this in a way where you can see it. Right, let me pick it up here. Yeah, that's where the rear, rear window is going to be moved to. And if I can pull this off without it, that ain't gonna work. This is where you need about 15 fingers and 20 hands, and yeah, that ain't gonna work. I'm just gonna set it in place, get the super glue out. All I'm gonna do is when I put this in, is I'm gonna put a little super glue on each end just to tack it in there and hold it in place right here. I don't want to fully super glue everything across this top of the de uh, quarters here. I don't want to really set it in because if I set it in too much and had to pop it out, that's just more work to pop it out. More cleanup work and so on and so forth. So I'm just going to put a little super glue on each end, just enough to tack it and hold it in place. Put it in place, hit it with my zip kicker. And set in place for just for a temporary. Be right back. All right. Well, that tacked in place. Now I can hold it and show it with the camera instead of having my fingers all in the way. This is going to be the new gap. This is what we're going to fill here with the neck with just a piece of sheet plastic. When you look at it from the side, you can see now how that back window has a little bit more of a pleasant, if you will angle to the back window and I'm losing it for a second 
switch hand. All right. It doesn't exactly match this section of the roof line like I had hoped. But it's a lot better than what it was instead of being way out here and having that gap like that. We're now in here. And it better matches this flow of the roof line to where it won't be such a a flat. Because like I say, when putting that back window in before, that back window would probably gonna be laying about like that to lay that back window in there. Now you actually be able to put a back window in there and have it look like it belongs there. Not saying anything was wrong with the design before, just to me, this just looks a little bit more pleasing. And I could have cut and stretched the roof and brought the roof, you know, lengthened the roof out. But to do that, you get such a long, long roof to it. And something like this, being that it's sectioned and, and squatted down height-wise, keeping that roof line short makes it look a lot better with a shorter roof than lengthening out the roof. That's why I opted to go with moving this forward. And from there, we'll just fill this in, pack it with some plastic, and then when it comes time, we'll just putty it all up, smooth it all out, scribe in a new panel line across there. I use the edge of the deck lid here as a, as a guide because that's the panel line right there. All I did is just split the panel line and brought that piece forward. Height-wise, we're pretty much with the, the deck lid. And then I'm going to start filling all this stuff in on the sides, getting all the lines from before filled in, sand it all out, shoot it in primer, and be ready for a giveaway. Hopefully that helped everybody out as far as that goes. Like I say, from here, all we're going to do is just fill this in. That's pretty, pretty easy work. Just cut a strip of plastic, set it in place, putty it, or I mean, you know, glue it in, sand it down, shape it, putty it. Be good to go. Anybody has any questions, leave comments down below. Um, some of my videos, past videos, if not, I'll try throwing it in at the end of this one. My email is out there. If anybody has any questions, comments, concerns, give me a shout. Hope this helps everybody and getting close, getting ready to 1,000 1, subscribers. If I can talk today, it'd be a miracle. Anywho, I want to say thank you to all the subscribers that are with me now. Thanks to the new ones that have joined here as of late. It is much, much appreciated. And uh, buckle up and hope you all enjoy the ride. Keep scratching that plastic, or in this case, scratching that resin. Jimmy Flintstone body. Get a lot of his product. He's pretty good with what he does. Pretty nice, nice guy, good friend. That was fairly close to me, so kind of touch bases with them every now and then. Haven't in a while, need to. All this COVID stuff going around and such, but hey, maybe I'll go down to Jimmy's house and see him on the corner. We'll see you later, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.